Hey, what's happening everyone? Pragmatic Addict here. So, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. I didn't have too much anticipation for this one. I mean, Garfield's nostalgic enough, familiar enough character for me. I saw the OG films in my childhood days. I don't remember if they're any good or not, good or not but I, I remember Bill Murray. And from the select times that this film's trailer played in my theater going experiences, from what I recall, it seemed like it had a little bit more going for it, you know, this time around, seeing things like Garfield's dad being a character, as well as just, like, this looking like your fair enough animated family movie to come out today. So right away, the thing that I really want to mention is that the presentation of this movie, like, I, wa I want to say early on because that's what really had me, like, engaged in the movie, but just in general, like, the whole presentation, like, the animation, it feels like a 2024 adaptation of a kid's comic. Everything from its blend of animation that looks hand-drawn at times, the narration and stories presented throughout with like certain gags and uh, cutouts like a kid would present something, as well as if, again, a kid's comic was adapted to the screen in 2024 from Sony Pictures Animation. Also, weird thing, with it being a modern day Garfield movie, I didn't think that I was gonna talk about this, but it just felt like a fresh Garfield movie. At first I was like, again, like, do we need a Garfield movie in 2024? But just like the humor that they do with like modern day stuff is appropriate enough and also fresh enough and makes sense enough for again, a Garfield movie set in modern day. Also the movie uh, in this film really fit well. The whole soundtrack is boppy, it's whimsical, it's laid back and groovy enough like a chubby cat with old man energy with a slapstick sense of humor, would probably jam out to. And with the blend of animations and soundtrack, this really, again, doesn't just feel like a Garfield movie, or even just like a comic adapted to screen, but also, it just really captures best, I think it possibly could, for a Garfield movie in general. But also just as a comedy, this is the most relatable I've ever seen Garfield, even with knowing his like, usual persona. This is the first time that I really fell for him, and I think as a classic comic strip, and how well they landed with the blends of humor, some more adult themed directions very briefly, you know, you're, you're always gonna have that in any kids movie. Just little brief like, ah ha ha, saying to the parent beside you while your kid's just looking at you like, I didn't get it. As well as just like the whole energy and life of this film that is Garfield. It was not only very relatable now to me as an adult, but the nostalgia factor will also work for parents taking their kids, you know, to see this one. And it's one of those things where maybe just like the older I get, the like seeing Garfield, the more relatable he is and the more like I get it. And what better way to do that with top notch animation, top notch humor, and a soundtrack that matches all that energy and the energy that we can imagine Garfield's soundtrack would sound like. But I, I am also gonna <laughs> throw you guys for a loop. This is all within like the first act. I will actually just say it. The first act of this movie is the best that you could do with a Garfield movie releasing today. But once the movie really starts to like get going and everything, there didn't seem to be that much of a concrete story. More so than just a 2024 beautifully animated, solidly delivered Garfield comedy. Well, whenever Garfield's actually given the chance to be the Garfield that we actually know him to be. Where things are in the film that you could only imagine like, what could they do that's bigger, newer for a Garfield movie? Now, like adding his father, seeing the cat's origin story with John, seeing Whimsical and new? I say that the way I do because there are like, I was gonna say like, seeing whimsical new additions of characters that at least weren't in the OG movies, I don't know if they were in the comic strips, but what I want to say is that as characters, just like thrown in a solid enough movie, like just being side characters in a, of all things, Garfield movie, they do feel like that. Like even for what they are, their screen time, their character arcs and storylines, writing all that, it just again feels like they're thrown in the movie and attempts to make it feel more full. But in the end, they just didn't need to be here. And no matter what they did with them, what they were doing, saying, I just never feel like I felt like I needed to see them in here. Which is a bummer because, again, after that really solid act, like that first act, this is the movie. And as the film went on, I noticed not too often, but things, like gags, <laughs> that just didn't really make sense where it really felt like how solid the film was in its first act 
was just starting to get more and more watered down and was just worrying me more and more like, okay, well, that's all they had going for it was that first act, which is crazy because you have things like, you know, Garfield's dad, which has never really been like an actual character. This is the first time we're actually seeing that and like for how strong it was in the first act. And of all things, a Garfield movie coming back in 2024, you'd think that they'd have a real genuine reason to do this movie. And it just felt like a random generic kids movie and nothing really made it stand out as a Garfield movie more than it could have just been any other kids movie as it went on. I mean, the movie isn't, you know, an entire slog to sit through. For example, there's an action-packed scene, probably the best scene in the movie where Odie and Garfield, they get trapped in like a cheese factory. It reminded me a lot of like the kitchen scene from like the movie recently, Migration, where it's just a horror film with these guys. Everything looks solid. They're seeing all this food. They think they're in paradise. And then it kind of like felt like it took inspiration from something like Toy Story where you're like, wow, this got really dark. I don't know what the fuck is gonna happen. And it took like that intensity and even like emotional factor, it felt like it was really inspired by that film's darkness and, you know, its heartstrings when it needed to. But you know what? Like, with seeing a whole movie about Garfield and his father, even if the writing itself didn't really seem to have much to say as, like, you would think that it would, the movie still knew how to pull out heartstrings as, it, again, like, kids' movies do. It, it's like that first act. The very final act comes back to not only, like, you know, that place of Garfield like like it was in the first act but also shows not only a really mature like emotional side of Garfield but also centers on a certain aspect of his life that but it was one of those things where I was like okay thank you that's what we needed that justified this other character being in this movie which is good you know like the the ending it wraps up fine <laughs> the intro of the movie the first act it is that Garfield movie that we would expect that we want, that it should be, but everything in between there, it just felt like everything else, again, it just becomes like a random generic kids movie that has nothing to really say or do, and nothing that really needs to be here, or like that says, okay, this needs to be in a Garfield specifically movie. And overall, guys, I'm gonna give this movie a mixed review. Also, I'm not a fan of Chris Pratt, nor do I think that he has the voice that calls for like, voice acting but even with this film's like initial trailer hearing his voice it was kind of like how i felt with the mario movie at first when i heard him voicing mario i was like yep that's chris pratt as mario that's how it felt when i saw this trailer i was like yep that's chris pratt voicing garfield but during the movie i actually couldn't hear like the chris pratt like aspect to that no matter how hard, hard i tried i just kept hearing garfield and maybe it's because mostly you know, in the beginning anyway. Things worked pretty well in the movie, otherwise that just made it work. That this Garfield movie felt like Garfield the movie so well that I just ultimately fell into saying, yeah, th this is Garfield, this is, this is the cat. When the movie is being not necessarily this Garfield movie, but when it's being Garfield that we know and love, it breathes Garfield. But yes, guys, that is going to do it for my review. I will see you guys in the next one. And as always, thank you for watching. Take care.